But so for most of the people, if I would say, what's your idea of happiness? Someone would say, oh, it would be lying down on the on the sand under this under the sun and um, just feeling the sun waves on my body. Some it would be touching someone else. Another we our body is just a factory of uh, of producing different types of. Uh, outcomes and I just want to be with another body that also another factory of such outcomes and people will be feeling happy about that. That's my idea of most people will say. And all these are limited to the physical body. So when we focus <clears throat> and our idea of uh, happiness becomes so much like food, so many people are at the same time on the planet obese and a lot of people are dying out of lack of good food also. And it's all, it's all happening at the same time. <clears throat> the kids who are dying out of, uh, the kids who are getting hit with the depressions. And in all this rumbling and, and all these ups and downs which are happening at a level, some related to COVID, some related to other, and COVID is not the only thing which is fought. It's just a super smart disease. It's going to be coming up with different options and variants as it uh, tries to teach to humanity something. The only way to work with COVID is, of course, to uh, see it as a blessing. So, and the more that we see COVID as a blessing, because what does it do finally? It lets go of the people more who are above 60 and people who have got uh, who I'm around 60, so I have, I can be like the key person who can make a joke about it, sort of something like that. But we are using up the resources and we are not making way. And most of us are on this planet just getting more and more into the physical world and feeling uh, unhappy and sad because not everyone has got the same ability to go to Cuba to lie down under the sun or have enough interaction so that there is someone near them, etc. So whatever the idea of people's happiness is, most of them are not being fulfilled. And the covering of the faces and the society around doesn't really help. And the fact that countries are getting locked down. Though. Also, the, even though you were never planning, let's say, to go to Russia, and you know that Russia is now right now closed and Germany is closed, even though it would still would have an impact on it. But sort of your basic right is taken away. But in all this turmoil, the opportunity to become spiritual is gets really, really prioritized. Like this is the one and only time in the history of uh, humanity, when all the deep secrets of enlightenment, of how to, how to make a quantum jump from just uh, living on this planet with the uh, unnormal mundane life, oh, I have this name, this is my body, and my body had these parents, and my body had these friends, and my body has these desires. And inside this body is a living force, uh, that I consider to be myself, I think it, I'm my consciousness, and this is my style of thinking. I think black is good, blue is bad, yellow is this, and then this, da, da, da. so a ton of likes and dislikes, creating a set of attitude that we call, or you call, your personality, and that you identify with yourself. And we think that with COVID and death, that personality gets zeroed out, and maybe it does. Maybe it does. <clears throat> but behind behind the body, behind the facility where all these thoughts and judgments come up, and behind this style of thinking, rationalizing, this is good, this is bad, COVID is bad, this is good, all those things, life is good, that is bad, is one of the, is one of the final ones. So we have all the movies where at the end, 
especially the Hindi movies. Indian movies have got the ending that the bad guy dies, the hero uh, marries the beautiful looking actress or the hero. And the assumption is that yeah, that's a good ending. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? Death for the right reason. is an excellent way to evolve. You go to the car place from where you rented a car that is now old and used and the engine is giving problem, the gases are coming out and the oil is leaking and this and that and it's not the latest model. You take your car back to the place from where you rented and you give back the old car. You get new one if you want. To be still driving on this uh, planet, you get a new car. And it's very flexible. You start off from a zero. Okay, so you have zero mileage on that car. So that's what totally happens. But when we are locked up in this way of thinking that I am going to be trusting and believing only in things that can, that I can touch, see and feel, and then people either become agnostic, I only believe what I see. And in that way, they empower something. I only see this, I only breathe this, I only feel this. So people become very, very super individualistic. And then it takes another twist and they say, we are scientific. And there is no scientific proof of God because I can't touch, see, feel. Okay. That is okay. But the fact that you are saying that your senses are the most important thing on the planet it takes you down a, down a path where it becomes almost impossible for you to be happy. And I'm going to explain why. When you say that your body and your feelings are the only source and that is the only knowledge that you believe in, you're based on your feelings. All the five senses, ask a street magician or just watch them. All the five senses can be fooled. Smell can be of something else. The touch can be of something else. What you see is not always what you get. You may be led into seeing things which may not, may be there, may not be there. So you, we have created this trap in which our senses are tied up with making the senses happy is what is considered to be happiness. So if you, if for most of them having sex and uh, having good food and being comfortable has been confused. So your sense gratification of eating rich, having um, these physical releases, I'm not saying organs. And this is a grown-up class, so don't be, don't get into a judgmental. So, whatever your idea of happiness is, it's based right now on your body. Having sex, having food, uh, feeling comfortable, feeling comfortable, and that's and that can be sold. So you can be sold a shirt which is like Gucci or something like that, and you can feel your ego can take. Oh, this is Versace or whatever. And you're willing to pay like 20, 200 times for that label, even if even if that label can may wash away, because it's giving to your ego a kick. And that can be bought. You can work more or you can do whatever. You can get more money and you can buy that ego gratification or you can buy that ego satisfaction or you can buy the sense gratification. And then you can think that you are happy. But it's just an uh, artificial high. And some people on the path of uh, combined spirituality with comfort. And I meet with them a lot of times. People who have been smoking pot or people who have even flown to Peru and taken ayahuasca. And then in their head, whatever is the new reality that they have imagined comes into. And sometimes they feel... Okay, and later on, all these pot smoking and I was, etc., always leads down to paranoia. 
and suicidal thoughts, which you may have even without. And worst case scenarios is people in there looking for ego gratification. I want to be special, I want to be enlightened, can take pot, can take ayahuasca, can even after taking, I knew I came to know about a spiritual retreat costing around five to seven thousand dollars, ten days. And everyone in the retreat, it was in Hawaii for 10 days, was high on pot, including the teacher. Everyone was happy. And the vibrations of Om, Om Namo Shivai are so strong. It's like a revolver. Even if it is in the hands of an ape, and you can correlate it to me also, even if it is in the hands of a very simple person like me, even then it will be affected because it works objective of whether you are on pot, you're on high, you're not high, you're enlightened, you're not enlightened. A deep part of you is always going to be struck with the vibrations of these holy sounds and prayers. That is a guarantee that you will feel today. Okay, so all I'm trying to do is that the physical world, happiness that everyone is looking for, is all tied up to the, to the physical senses. And our identity, which we call personality, is locked up with this body. But the personality is based on the word persona, which means mask. That we put on to navigate the world our social interactions. And then behind the mask is the real, real you. Now the trick is that the real, real you and the real, real me are the same. Think of us, these 20 people that we are all connected digitally right now, as one body, but different cells. And the total consolidation of the body is a superpower that we cannot, none of them. The heart cannot really understand. If you were to start talking with your heart or the cells of your heart, and you tell to your heart cell, uh, you are me, I am you, the heart cell is going to say, no, I'm just a cell, I'm limited, I see other cells, I believe in them, I don't believe in you because you're just a noise in my head, I don't really feel you. And you say, yeah, but... Uh, if you were to see me, I was to take you out from the heart and somehow show to you who I am or who you are in totality. In around three seconds, you will die because you will be out of your framework of reference. So at that time, most of the people will say, no, I don't want any enlightenment. I want to continue as the heart said. So you have to be ready for that jump, quantum jump, of consciousness to break out of the mundane limitations that you have put on yourself, starting with the first and the foremost. You are not the body. All the Dekita, the Quran, the Bible, all of them at the end of the day just come to one single sentence. So in these super fast, efficient times of COVID, that one sentence is the core and you have to take a leap of faith. You are attending this digital session. So think of it that we are all connected and you just trust. You place the most holy or the precious thing that you have in your power. Your focus, following your trust in the words that are flowing, not from me, through me. So you trust that I'm not the body. And just with that one sentence, you start to discover the non-body part deep hidden or encased or put in the safest place where even if your body was to get destroyed, that soul part of you will never be destroyed deep in your heart, in the deepest part of your heart. I want you to imagine a temple to the creator. That's what your heart is. 
and in this the deepest part of your heart in the in the deepest part of the temple i want you to imagine the mystic symbol of hindus om and feel the vibration of om filling this temple in the deepest part of the heart temple and in the center of this temple is the om a bright golden burning light and in the center of om is the infinity of all the universes all the creations when you have been identifying yourself with your body you were locked in this body now you are identifying with the deepest part of your heart the holiest of all holy places the most sacred and out here all the walls of your own thinking that you have put and this body and this style of thinking i like this those actually had become walls they break out with om in the center of your heart and your heart becomes an infinity in which everything is there you are flying above this ocean of infinity of your heart and you're just feeling the vibrations the whole thing what you are seeing the ocean of infinity the one that is flying above this the observer and the vibration the mystical experience that you are having it's all reduced to one oh identify with the first om from your body you're not your body second om you de-identify yourself from your thoughts and whatever uh, whatever thoughts and streams of thinking have been present in your head and the third om you let go of your style of thinking which is basically i like this i don't like this so all your prejudice are released oh 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 now with these three ohms you identify yourself with the three qualities of the infinity of the creator think of yourself as rays of the sun which have left the sun for various adventures on various adventures in various forms in different planets in different creations right now locked up in on earth in this body not even locked up just using this body this sack of blood and some organs you are using this sack to serve others so the three qualities of the god are love light and laughter oh it becomes total love unconditional love the love that you have been looking for all over the world in your different attempts you're looking for more respect you're looking for more money you're looking for more food you're looking for more security you're looking for love and now you identify that you are the source of love so how can a person who is a billionaire be looking for a 1 dollar note on the planet you are a billionaire om namo shivaya
Namo Shiva is the mantra, is the prayer, taking you from your normal human existence to the infinity of the creator that since no words can describe the infinity of the creator of which you and me are the part. Sounds come out from my mouth. They reach your ears. But the consciousness that is present in both of us is the same. So there is no hierarchy. Oh, I am teaching you are this. No, it's just a game, role play. Oh. Shiva is the infinite, conditional name for the infinity of love. The, the form of God that sponsors, supports the growth towards infinity of love via meditation is the God Shiva. So, and that God Shiva is present and dormant in everyone and it is getting activated. And Om Namo Shiva means Om, I activate my divine energy. Namo, not my, but I belong to the infinity. So Om invokes, activates your energy located in your body, mind and intellect behind that. And immediately it becomes, the moment the, those powers are unleashed, you become, no, not me. But I belong to the universe. The universe doesn't belong to me. I belong to the universe to serve it. Because the universe, the people in your lives, the events that have happened, the stories of your life, all your memories, all that is happening, that all that all that will happen, all that you see and that you don't see. Is all one that we know as God. Namo, not me. And Shiva is pure dissolution or dissolving of yourself to become an infinity of love at a level of heart. Everyone is working nowadays at a level of head. So everyone is pragmatical. What's in it for me? How can I use this to make more money? How can I use this to get ahead in life? How can I use this? How can I get more from life? And the heart is always, I want to give. So activate the heart. Shiva. Om. Namo. Shiva. Om. Namo. Now bless yourself. In this moment of dissolution, bless yourself so that you see yourself as a golden angel. And you bless everything and everyone that has happened in your life. And the whole group will use the power of visualization to help everyone or out there. So just the key of becoming a healer is to find someone who accepts your healing energy. So the whole group will go around one by one. All 19 of us will be sending love to one and then move on. So the first person is Krishna Murti. So if the whole group sends from the heart love to him as a golden wave. See yourself as a golden angel with wings, blessing, sending blessings to another angel and sending love to Krishna Murti. Whatever turmoil he had in his life nine months ago is resolved. Whatever turmoil he has had in his life, whatever changes he has had nine months ago, he blesses though the people, there are two people in that event man and woman. So he sends love to those, to that event and sending love to whatever happened eight, nine months ago. He becomes free 
and we become enlightened because we have found someone who is accepting the blessings flowing through us. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. We are sending love, light and laughter as a golden wave to Rita. And she has been a lot of stress in the last one month or three weeks. Om Namo Shiva. It's the question of death has arisen in her head. Om Namo Shiva. So UV enlightenment takes you to a place beyond body. And body is the one that dies. The soul never dies. The soul cannot die. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Marina, Om Namo Shiva. And she is sharing her blessings with her sons. Om Namo Shiva and husband. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Larissa is sending love to her disease, which is like a wake-up call, so that now she is evolving spiritually very fast. And by evolving spiritually, by becoming whole spiritually, the body also lets go of some of the diseases. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Katya, Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Zarina had some issues two weeks ago. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Peace, whatever happened two and a half years ago. Om Namo Shiva. Conflict and then sadness two and a half years ago. Om Namo Shiva. Hey, the relationships and legal issues. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Whatever the group is sending, that person is sending love, light and laughter to the incidents and to the, to the people involved. Om Namo Shiva. She is sending love, light and laughter to her liver and kidneys. Om Namo Shiva. And whatever caused them to be in practice. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Gale is reconciling with the family. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Megan, Om Namo Shiva. Letting go of whatever happened when you were 19 and two months. A huge conflict in relationships. And then at 27, uh, break, emotional investment in breakup. And 31st year of life, uh, new start. And 34th, conflict, even legal things. All these things are from the past and you let go. By sending love, light and laughter to the events of our life, we let go. We empower the true ours, true myself, the true you is empowered by sending blessings to the incidents that are stored in our mind as happenings. But all these happenings are in the past. Even one second ago, whatever happened, is in the past. We have a very dynamic experience. So let it go. 19, 21st, 24, 27, 31st. All of them related to relationships. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om. Everyone feel the power of Om flowing through us. Namo, our heart expanding. Shiva, visualize the other person as receiving the golden light from your heart one way. Two, see that other person as becoming whole, smiling, golden light. Second way. Third, just offer the prayer, the effort of the prayers and breathing. Offer it to the other person. And in the process of serving the others with their permission, you also grow and evolve. Because only people who are serving others by praying for them, by doing some acts, by thinking even for, they are the people who are living and who have joy. All the others are just happiness looking people. It's like happiness looking for happiness. Of course, it cannot find it. It cannot be found neither in relationships. They are sex actors committing suicides every day. It cannot be found in 
money they are rich people taking drugs and depressed all the time it cannot be find even in the normal family life or in some if everyone is respecting you you think and you don't have enough respect for yourself so the only there is no happiness on the planet there is just joy of serving only those who are serving others knowing that they are spiritually and not looking for ego gratification or sense satisfaction or gratification they are the only joyous people on the planet everyone just just wish them well that they grow spiritually just like you are growing yourself right now om namo shiva om namo shiva om namo shiva om namo shiva ji and your family om namo shiva tammy and your son om namo shiva shar om namo shiva priti नमो शिवा ना आई वॉन्ट टू आई एम गोइंग टू बी शेयरिंग विद यू one of the persons of from our group she went out on a date with a person who look in his or her search for enlightenment took a, takes a lot of pot and things that he or she sees angels and then it comes to a point of course when these voices and things gets inside their head so nothing on this planet can disturb us from fulfilling our responsibility which is to be the best mother father sister daughter nothing can stop us not even not satana not any anything not angel they can only support us not even god can stop us from fulfilling our obligations on this planet because that's our primary plan mission to serve others but when people take drugs and uh, or looking for higher powers start interacting i want to be seen uh, i want to open third eye and see dead people etc then these dead people are just like us they just lost a body that's all the only difference between us and the dead people is that we have a rent for higher organism called a body a sack of some fluids and some organs and with the with an exchange of uh, oxygen happening in it and some fluids coming out from this tank to tank that's the only difference but the dead really envy us because we still have the the ability to serve and they have limited unless they become angels but even even angels have to go through so i had promised you evidence of angels and other beings so this lady who is a part of the our like she reaches meditates regularly she reaches out from time to time for different meditations or questions and she uses tarot also so when you are asking the universe sometimes you can also open yourself to it she went to a to a day and coming back she is sitting behind the the driver the uber driver is driving her back and she doesn't feel comfortable and she is bordering her like she is putting her lipstick or something and suddenly her camera which is in her back takes a photograph of her outside the bar and the hand of the entity that had attached herself by her partaking with this gentleman is seen very clearly so on one hand i'm going to show the photograph but it will just for 5 seconds because it will give it does give a people person really a creepy feeling but you have to see beyond it that if there is an entity which is clearly visible on the photo then there is also an angel that warned the lady of that you have been taken care of that you need rather and she called and we just prayed together so i have blacked out somewhat so that her face is not really very visible but you will see 
So I'm going to be sharing a photograph of an entity which attached to her because she was in link with someone who smokes and whatever different practices. But the intent is that when you are totally aware that there are such things, then you also have the correlating and corresponding faith because that's what we lack. We want a God to be, we want to be able to see a God like an accountant sitting somewhere and taking note of everything happening on the, oh, this was good, this was bad, etc. But the universe is a tad sort of like really doesn't get into it, doesn't really care about a lot of the small things happening. But it does care if we hurt anyone. So I'm going to be showing to you the photograph so that you can see that they are angels because otherwise this photograph could not have been taken. Even now from the photograph, it's visible that her hands are not there. So who took the photograph and what's over out there? So I'm going to be sharing my screen. You can see, I haven't really done this ever, so. And this happened out of the blue. This break that happened right now, it happened out of the blue. And it always happens when we take the group to really mystical places. Things for which some of you may be prepared, may not be prepared. But these interactions show that the digital world is also a part of the world. And the lesson that is being imparted is imparted to you is too deeply spiritual to be a smooth thing. <laughs> so the more challenges we have in our lives, the more interesting it is. And where are the challenges going to come from? From the other. And that is exactly what satana means, the other one. The other one of who? The other one of God. But how can there be two gods or anything but God? So there is only one and the one inside you and me is the same. Again, think of it, us together as being one entity. So stop looking for your own benefit, start to serve. And to serve, at times you will have to deprioritize your body and what your body wants or needs or what you think needs. You will have to prioritize the happiness of others. And that is becoming true spiritual. Meditation is not closing eyes and then Om Namo Shiva going to a sacred place, hearing the parrots and the birds and then coming back or getting this power or that. Meditation is serving others. Playing your role to a perfection to the best of your ability. If you have children, you be the best mother. If you have mother, you be, try to be the you we try to assuage and do the best. And then have total faith that I tried my best. Leave it that time. I have five friends and two daughters. I try my best, but there's no way that even anyone can make anyone happy. It doesn't work like that. Happiness is up and down. But the joy of serving, that is a part of your soul. Okay, And people who are living just for themselves, no matter how many times um, Musk or Bezos, etc. I have met some of the really rich people, the people who should be so, so happy, super depressed, and that's why they reached out somehow to me. I'm not really like famous or all day, but sometimes people will reach out. And most of the time, uh, there was a time when I was trying, how is it that they made this money? This money? And I saw that it, sometimes it's from the past, something that has been done. But the really rich people have no clue. They're clueless to how and why they have this money. And if they have this money and they're using that huge responsibility of having more money to the advantage of others, then there is a chance they're going to be joyous. If they have all this money and they spend it on whatever thing he is on planes and cars, it's, a, it's just a, a ego assuagement for really weak. If you really need the latest Ferrari or Mercedes or a relationship with a symmetrical face person or these thingies of the world you need to feel confident, 